We have with us Professor Dr. V. Vijay Kumar, former Vice Chancellor, National Law Institute, University, Bhopal. Professor Dr. V. Vijay Kumar is the Vice Chancellor of National Law Institute, University, Bhopal, and the former Vice Chancellor of Dr. Ambedkar Law University, Chennai. He has been a professor in National Law School of India University and has been instrumental in suggesting various changes in the legal education sphere in India. He has held the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees Chair on the Refugee Law and is at the board of several national law schools steering various policy issues. He is a member of Academic Council of National Law University, Delhi. With various papers, books and articles to his credit, he has been a visiting scholar at New York University, Toronto, Canada, and has been, the, and has been awarded the Amity Academic Excellence Award and the Best Vice Chancellor's Award by the Indian Red Cross Society. Now I request our faculty, Rishi sir, to present the book. I now request Professor Dr. V. Vijay Kumar sir to kindly deliver the valedictory address on the importance of good drafting, the basics of writing research reports and dissertations. Dr. Subramanya, my learned colleagues from various disciplines are present here. A very good evening to everyone present here. It is indeed an important uh, aspect on which the elementary address is to be delivered. And I thought uh, this is the right opportunity to put forward some of uh, the experiences that I have seen. So that when I tell you the experience, possibly you will not uh, commit this as blunder. That's you no know, prevention is better than cure. And that is the purpose of the importance of the drafting. The basics of writing research reports and dissertations. I really do not know, I don't want to take sides. Whether writing a thesis in your uh, own vernacular language is good, bad, or ugly. Because it has uh, benefits, it has positive elements, it has also certain negative elements. I will just, uh, will not, I will not uh, mention the name of the student. But it happened in the Lucknow University some time ago, where uh, an associate professor who has become from assistant professor to associate professor. I was there in the selection committee, then uh, he gave me a book. It was uh, very neatly written. But he was not able to speak even a single sentence in English. Then I spoke to his dean indirectly and found out that this fellow has traveled down south, possibly to Madras University, picked up a thesis, right? And then I went back to Lucknow, got it translated into Hindi, and uh, you know, published his thesis also in Hindi. Your plagiarism software like Eternity or anything else. It will not be of any use. Right? They turned out to the eternity also. That was the situation. Now, he became a successful teacher because he had his uh, career. He has taught for 8 9 years. Became an associate professor. Possibly would have retired by this time. But uh, I am not worried about that one individual. But I am worried about the 30 batches of students, right, who were trained by him, who were uh, possibly supervised by him, <laughs> right? And you just uh, imagine for a minute, would you like to be one of uh, such characters? Certainly not, right? The second story that I am going to tell is Chat GPT. Right? Now today you don't have to do anything. You don't have to even type something. <laughs> you know, only if you have a command or if your uh, command is not uh, that brilliant, 
you can ask your friend or my daughter or son to just dictate something. And within a few minutes, you have thousands of images uh, aligned. And then possibly if you give it, uh, possibly this is a shortcut uh, method to get any research work done. The third one is the student Xerox. All of you know that, uh, what student Xerox is. It is known for two things, right? Today you give any topic and uh, they have stipulations. If you give more money, they can give it within 15 days. If you give lesser money, within one year, within uh, one month, they will produce something. And the plagiarism, if it is uh, sent for review, it will certainly give less than 5% plagiarism. So they know what to do, what not to do. So therefore, we have a method in which the University Grants Commission is trying to do its best for preserving the quality, but ultimately nothing happens. The reality is far from, uh, I hope when I was talking to Dr. Subramanian before coming here, uh, we were, I was the product of Madras University, then Madras University. Getting a second class is a Herculean task. There was no one who passed out uh, the master's degree in law without failing at least in a couple of subjects. Right? Even the brilliant people have to fail. 13 years afterwards, we only broke that record. But still, today, after the UGC prescribed the qualification, 55% is required at your master's level. Please tell me whether your university gives anything less than 55 to anybody. Right? So on one side, we blame the government. From first standard onwards, uh, public exams are all gone. Push them, push them, push them, because you have to show very good results, right? And when they come to SSLC, they know nothing. And they join degree and then they always, you know, these agitations, uh, particular language, copying in the examination. In Madras, there was a brilliant uh, inspector of police because he did not have the money to pay, at least I did not understand, to pay for his son to become an engineer or a doctor. He returned the principal, he went and sat in the examination hall and wrote the exam also. So I think uh, in the academic field, we have uh, black sheep like this everywhere, right? So therefore, uh, the importance of uh, research is one aspect. Before I get into these 20 slides, not very lengthy. I know that uh, you are at the fag end of uh, your torture, right? And uh, I will not, uh, you know, contribute much to it. I will try to lessen it so that at least you can uh, leave it early. Uh, what was I trying to say? Black sheep. Black sheep. Right? Okay. Now, during COVID, almost every teacher became uh, used to this, what you call this, internet-based education. Right? Uh, the students are also very smart. They will just log in. Close the camera. That's the end of it. Right? And uh, the teachers also know very well. So they also they never go bother about anything. Sit and read something for about one hour and then, uh, you know. I asked my own teachers, I'm very, you know, candid in saying this, at the National Law School, uh, National Law University, Bhopal. I asked the teachers, now your workload has come to six hours per week. From 18 hours, it has come down to six hours per week. Why do you have to write and publish something? This is the right time to do it. Right? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, higher education, research and publication has become a big, big thing. And therefore, when I asked them to do it, they did not do it. What I did was, uh, when uh, CAS, the Career Advancement Scheme came, one teacher published six articles in less than eight months. So I took all of them, all of them are Scopus indexed. I was very happy. But I went to each and every website to find out she must have spent around 24,000 rupees in getting these six articles published. I called her and told her, Madam, uh, are you trying to cheat me or are you cheating yourselves? Right? When I explained all these things, 
she was feeling very bad, but the fact remains that uh, she had done something which she should not have done. And she is from the a noble, you know, Ivy University from US, California. Right? If that is the standard of higher education and in a professional institution like law school, then I think even God cannot say this thing. Right? Therefore, what is it that is required? Today, if a research project is to be brought to any institution, there is no public or private divide anymore. You ask the teachers to write a research project, they don't tell that they don't know how to write a research project. You ask them to write an article, they don't know how to write an article. Right? So therefore, what they do is, they don't write. They don't apply for any of them. I have been in the University Grants Commission for minor and major research number of times. They used to give me around 80 lakhs of rupees. This was among only law faculty. And my neighbor is uh, for English, uh, social sciences, other disciplines. They used to have more than 300, 500 applications. And when law comes, they bring a small folder. There are six or seven applicants. And four of them are from Kerala. Right? And uh, they're all private colleges. And you know, within two minutes, I complete my work and uh, give them, disperse them. Maximum is around uh, six colleges. Right? 50,000 rupees or 1,50,000 rupees, 10 lakhs. 70 lakhs I have returned it to UGC. So that is the state of affair as far as the research is concerned. The reasons are many and I will not get into it. How to do research? I think in all the previous sessions uh, from questionnaire to interview method, everything you would have been deliberating on this. I would like to just take you to the last leg of it. Right? But uh, when I say last leg, I don't want to start from the last leg, so therefore, what is this research? I would like to ask these four questions. And you have to ask these four questions when you start your research. What is it? What? Why? How? And when? These are the four questions that you have to ask. Right? What the researcher wants to do. Right? I have seen many people where they go to the teacher, Sir, what should I do research? The teacher has to suggest something, right? The teacher has to give the topic. On their own, they choose, uh, I think there are very few scholars who choose the topic on their own. Maybe I don't know, things have changed today. But uh, by and large, they go and consult uh, the teacher. I had an interesting uh, experience in law school, Bangalore. Uh, one teacher came to me and uh, said, I want to do research under your supervision. I said, okay, very good. Now, what is the topic? I want to do research in law. Well, why you have come only to do research in law, not in aeroscience, <laughs> right? Not in physics and chemistry. Law itself is a notion. And then we just thought this way that we looked at it, and then I said, I would like to do research in constitutional law. You know, it took almost uh, half an hour for me to convince him, please go back, do some studies and find out where the problem lies and come back. And he tried his level best and finally he decided to choose another uh, supervisor. Right? I was also happy and he was also happy. Right? So therefore, what the researcher wants to do is the first question. And uh, therefore, in terms of research, identification of a problem is the first thing that a researcher has to do. How it will come? It may come because of your research uh, literature survey, or it may come because of what is happening. If uh, a geologist or a disaster management scientist is there, what has happened to the tunnel, right? And how, you know, under these circumstances, what to do, what not to do, that can be researched because the problem has come to them. Therefore, we have to understand the researcher has to spend some time in the library and then see where the problem lies. If you identify the problem, 50% of your research is complete. Right? That's, what, that's what I can say. Why the researcher wants to do it? There may be a number of uh, reasons. I will not get into it. I have to do my master's degree, I have to do my MPhil, I have to do my PhD. Right? And therefore I want to do research. Not for uh, his or her own interest. Right? 
and therefore it is much more easier i will not convince around to explain these things how the researcher wants to do it right chat gpt or otherwise choices are very clear chat gpt student xerox or the translators which one right so how you want to do it is very clear when within what time frame that you have to do it uh, i hope dr subramanya will agree uh, when i joined the my phd program i took a vow that 3 years means 3 years 3 years i complete right it took 7 years <laughs> right because something has uh, come in the picture so you have to do postpone this postpone this and ultimately when i got the final love letter from madras university stating your uh, candidature will be taken away if you don't do it so i took some time off and then uh, sat and wrote the thesis right but today these problems are not there thanks to technology right uh, in our days uh, five carbon copies and every letter has to be typed if there was one spelling mistake we have to apply the white fluid and then take it it was a difficult process altogether but we did it right today it is an entirely different uh, ball game and therefore these four questions when you look at i will not give you more answer or more illustrations to this but please keep this in mind now what is this research design i have given some definitions once again i don't want to do it as i told you i, I promise that i'll try to complete it at the earliest so 20 slides three slides are already gone <laughs> right so therefore i am not going to read each and every definition what the paul young said what miller said this and that right but uh, what is important is the third one formulation of a research design is pivotal for the success of a research program right please keep this particular uh, you know third bullet point in mind formulation of a research design which is very very important and you may do everything and if you have already written your synopsis and by and large i tell my candidates convert the synopsis as introduction first chapter but after doing that write the conclusion go back and review your introduction once again right so therefore when it goes for evaluation this is about the researcher i have to tell you the stories of uh, how the evaluators you know play the role right one uh, senior teacher got a phd thesis he read the introduction it was brilliant read the second chapter he was familiar with the language of uh, what was written and after a few pages he realized that it was his own phd thesis <laughs> right somebody had copied and then you have to write back to the dean with the stronger words please do this right ask him to rewrite this is my thesis he has copied without even citing it right so therefore there are people of this sort everywhere one must be very very careful so formulation of a research design is equally important and there are many other graphics that i can tell uh, one of my friends uh, gurjit singh is no more in this world today and he got a thesis for correction he went through the first chapter he found so many mistakes he asked me professor uh, isko kya karna hai what what should i do i said best thing is what is your opinion no this fellow cannot be given a phd unless he rewrites the whole thing again i said if that is the case pack it and send it back to the university and tell them that we don't have the time to do the evaluation part of it you know if they get the 2500 rupees do you think for 2500 rupees somebody will burn the midnight oil go through each and every page each and every line no not at all possible right so therefore it's a clue you can take it or leave it your introduction and conclusion must be as good as possible the rest of it you can leave it to your faith right but introduction and conclusion because many people just go through the introduction then they analyze the depth of your research 
and then they turn to conclusion to find out whether there are any suggestions forthcoming. And I can add only one more clue for this limited purpose. In your conclusion, if you raise series of questions, research, you have found some answer, but there are still some void. And therefore, if you raise series of questions in your conclusion, I think somebody who reads your thesis will pick up one of those problems for analysis in the future. So your introduction and conclusion must be as perfect as possible, right? And in spite of it, people may get the degrees at a different story, right? There are evaluators who will not even see the introduction and conclusion. There are people who opened the envelope, took only that the DA, DA, you know, that the evaluation receipt, etc., etc., asked their PhD candidates to write some report and then send it without even seeing it. And if your luck is good, you will also be proved, your degree also will be proved. But by mistake, it comes to people like me. Right? Then uh, it's very difficult. So I hope you understand. You have to look at your stars to submit your thesis, whether your stars supply and they give you some uh, good time or not. So, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, the research design is one of the important aspects. Now, what are the steps in the research design that one has to take up? I will not define these things because uh, each and every subtopic that I take, it may take at least 10 to 15 minutes even to precisely tell something. So I leave the PowerPoint presentation for your uh, information, right? I think the organizers will send it across to you. I will only read the design of the experiment or inquiry. Definition and measurement uh, variables, sampling procedure, tools and technique of data collection, right? All these are part of the research design. Classifying, editing, and processing the data, analysis of the data, and finally, the last one, the report writing, right? So, research design starts from the beginning, and finally, what we are now going to discuss is about research. Uh, report writing. Now, good research design uh, should have all these things. I will not once again get into this. So, eight slides are over. <laughs> right? Let me come to this uh, report writing. Right? Now, in this, uh, please carefully, I will now forget all those things what I said. Please come to this uh, point. In this slide, the purpose of report writing is not to communicate with oneself, but to communicate with others. Please keep this uh, point in mind. If you think that uh, the reader will know everything, you are mistaken. Your thesis need not be read only by the evaluators. They are kept in the library, somebody else will also read that. So, you have to give the knowledge up to that particular date or year in which the thesis was submitted, right? And then he finds something and gives his suggestions or her suggestions. And therefore, you have to understand, you have to give the foundational, and that is where the introduction comes into picture. A brief history, evolution, part of it and then the issues that you would like to look at and then finally what you have done and the conclusion. So therefore, in uh, the purpose of the report writing is not to show your brilliance. You may be brilliant, no doubt about it. But somebody who is reading it must get some material out of it. <coughs> right? Uh, there used to be somebody, uh, a judge, uh, I hope all of you would remember, Justice Krishna here. Right? His English is bombastic. Or we call it as brutish, not British, brutish. Because he uses some of the languages, uh, Indian languages, combines that with English. And if you look for dictionary words, you will not get those words also. Right? Uh, he wrote a book, and uh, Justice A. Bhattacharya was asked to edit that book. And uh, he asked me to go through that, uh, you know, uh, this part of it. I went through only one chapter, 
It took four days for me to read it once. <laughs> One chapter, not more than 60 pages. It took more than four days. And I did not understand the ABC of anything after reading it for four days. Right? So, your art of writing, it doesn't convey anything to anyone. What is the use? You may be brilliant. And one of the law school students, when he came for the lecture, he said, Sir, why are you writing your judgment like this? Even the judges need five dictionaries. He asked the student to get out of the place. <laughs> so, you know, you have to communicate to the outside world. You must be precise. And that is why even the laws today are written in plain language, simple plain language, so that people can understand. And that is the first principle that you have to keep in mind. Don't communicate to yourselves and say that you are brilliant, you can do everything, right? One day sun is next to you, or moon is next to you, please avoid. Come to the ground level and try to do something, right? Two broad questions should be considered in planning this report. The first question is, what does the audience want or need to know about the study? Nobody does this. Nobody does this. I am writing because I am interested in my PhD. Who bothers about the audience? Right? And therefore, you have to scale it down and scale it up. Right? And that is what I am trying to say. What does the audience want or need to know about the study? For example, uh, when I was a student, when I did something on refugee law, that was my first uh, dissertation in the Madras University. Nobody has done on uh, refugees. Because the circumstances, 1983-84, the Sri Lankan refugees are coming into Tamil Nadu, right? So, what is that audience would like to hear from the legal side? Whether there is an international convention, whether there is a domestic law, whether there are judicial decisions, what will apply to these Sri Lankan refugees? And if I tell, how many of them will take the clue out of this? Right? It is not that I can write something and then I don't communicate anything as uh, is being expected by the audience. The second question is, how can this information be presented? Right? Uh, I think uh, thanks to our vernacular love and affection to vernacular language, uh, I was in the civil service board for six years from uh, 2012 to 2017. In the last year of uh, that assignment, 2017, if I remember right. The interview, you know, we, are, we used to get about 25 minutes per candidate. Right? Five members. And each one will ask three or four questions at five minutes duration. And we'll complete it. Now, because of the pressure brought by somebody, UPSC said, you can also answer the questions in your own mother tongue. So candidates who got MTech gold medal, MBBS, MDS, right? They all want to do the interview part of it, the board part of it, in the vernacular language. Why? Because they had a plan, like the plan that we have, right? They also had a plan. Because UPSC has to appoint a translator, the board member will ask the question to the translator. They don't even look at the candidate. Because they are bothered whether the translator understands the question first. <laughs> the translator then translates the question in the vernacular language to the candidate. We all stick like, <laughs> sit there like stupid fellows watching all the proceedings. That fellow says in the vernacular language and then this fellow communicates it uh, to the board. So where I could have asked three questions, now I am able to do only one, right? Literally, the interview, you know, the interaction between the candidate and the board members is reduced to one third of the time, right? Which means eight minutes, one question each by all the members and the chairman may ask one more clarification. Systematically, they have this problem. Not that they cannot speak English, not that they cannot speak Hindi, right? But they are, uh, you know, very eager. This is the method in which how the information can be presented. Ultimate motive, ulterior motive, right? 
can also be one such thing. And uh, now universities are also permitting you to submit your thesis in your own languages. Right? Please try to understand, I'm not against it. Please don't mistake me for that. When you publish something in your own mother tongue, unless otherwise it is Tamil literature, Kannada literature, that's a different story. Right? In a subject, if you do it, it is going to be available only to the benefit of the people in that state. Right? They can't hear me. Okay. Can you hear me now? So without hearing me, you are all laughing, is it? <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> okay. Right. Let me just move to the meaning of a research report. Now a research report, see the first point, is a product of one's own study. The word one's own, O W N. I thought of putting a question mark, I write within bracket uh, Google or GPT. <laughs> but I thought, you know, it's too much is also too much. So therefore, the product of one's own study, you should have the satisfaction. You should have the satisfaction of the fact then that you submitted your thesis, got your degree, right? Only you will know what are the shortcuts that you have employed. Even your supervisor may not know that will keep on haunting you till your death. That I have cheated, I did something to get my you know, degree like this. So therefore, if it is your own study, you have to labor, you have to work hard. Right? Please do not follow any shortcut method. That's my only advice. Do not follow shortcut uh, method. It will give you immediately some relief, some benefit. But in the long run, right, when somebody questions you at a later point of time, it will be a little embarrassing for you that you know nothing about uh, the topic of uh, research that you have done, right? Then, the research report should also convey to the interested persons, to the interested person, not to everyone. If I take a thesis in uh, physics or chemistry, I will not understand anything, right? But it is only for those interested persons, the whole result of the study, right? So that is the meaning of uh, the research report and its writing, right? This is the last and concluding, uh, I won't say last, it is the concluding part of uh, your research, right? And that is why we say the first draft. And uh, my another advice to you is, now so many people are present here, create a sort of network. Right? Whether you are writing an article, whether you are writing a proposal for research, or whether you are writing your dissertation or PhD thesis, whatever it is. Right? You trust somebody, and once you complete your first draft, give it to somebody else to go through. Give it to somebody else to go through. Right? Now, finally, in those days, I had taken my thesis to the English HOD in the Presidency College, and asked him to go through. Because our English is entirely different, right? So this are all the things. Today you don't have to bother about it. Grammar is there, right? They, they, are, they made your life very easy, right? And it is not that you should know the answer. You click on the underlying word, automatically it brings the next word. It substitutes. So you are all lucky in one sense, so that your work becomes really minimal to what you call the research, right? So therefore. Uh, <coughs> The last point here is, the preparation of the report is the final stage of any research. So you complete it, you yourself can read it once, right? Uh, Dr. Madhav Menon used to tell uh, in many of the uh, programs like this, that uh, he was cleaning the house, he got his PhD thesis, opened it and saw, which idiot has allowed his PhD thesis to, to be awarded a degree? Because that time it was very good, now he's become a doyen in that field. Now he looks back at his own thesis. He says, who, who has given this? Which idiot has given this? You know, PhD, you know, degree to him. So therefore, reading at different parts of your own uh, lifetime, and that is a place where research, actual research takes place. PhD degree is only the beginning point. And after that, 
anything that happens in your life, you try to take lessons from that, write some research articles, submit some research proposals to substantiate, to challenge, to question. And that is a place where your research report can do a wonderful job for you and to your successors, right? To the institution wherever you are working. Now, preparing a research report is a highly skilled work. If you do it on your own, it is a skilled work. If you want to know the skills, then it is much more easier. Right? I was telling uh, Dr. Subramanya, one very important uh, gentleman, I don't want to name the name or the institution to which he belonged. He went to the supervisor. The supervisor looked into the, one of the, you know, he had more than 200 uh, pieces submitted to the department. He pulled something and said, remove the first page and the last page. Right? Put your name and submit it. Right? Here the student was good, not the supervisor. The student was good. He was holding a responsible position and said, no sir, I don't want to do this. I want to really learn something. This is a shortcut method. So you must have the courage and conviction to say that. Right? And even if the product is very bad, still you have the confidence that you have done your own work. I hope you understand what I am trying to say. Right? Please keep that in mind. So it is a highly skilled work. It requires considerable amount of thought, effort, patience, penetration and overall approach to the problem. If you read the second chapter and go to the third chapter, while writing the third chapter you will see that something wrong has taken place in the second chapter. Right? That's why I know it is a constant work. It is not that you know you assemble 350 pages, submit it for your award. Right? So it is a continuous work and you have to toil like this. Right? It requires a lot of objectivity and probably because the ancient wisdom. In Sanskrit there is a saying, Vivaham Vidya Nashaya. <laughs> right? If you get married, then I think it puts an end to your uh, learning process. Right? Uh, in our days, uh, there used to be some uh, program called as FIP. I, I don't know how many of you know. Faculty Improvement Program. So they are all regular teachers. They will be sent out to, to do research for 3 years or 4 years. The entire period, the salary will be given to them. Right? But uh, we nicknamed it as different things. We call it as Family Improvement Program. <laughs> Everyone who went on uh, FIP, they added one more member to the family. And some of them did not complete their PhD, but they were successful in adding one more, right? So it requires lots of objectivity. Now these are all arising out of what I have seen, right? And uh, both uh, have been a subject, and I have also supervised and uh, interacted with many institutions, and that is why I am saying all these things, right? And then it also requires uh, creative writing. It comes, uh, it cannot be short. You write some literature, you read some literature, the way it is presented, right? And you also are influenced by the way that it is presented. If you are asked to write, you would have put some negative phrases, right? Uh, a very, very simple example I'll give you. If the student does something in the class, we say get out, right? You don't use that word get out. Will you please leave the class? Right? Will you please leave the class? It is a sophisticated way of, the consequence is only the same. So the language that you use, the things, the mistakes that you have corrected, all these things is a continuous process. And that is why after writing the conclusion, you have to once again go to the introduction. Right? To rewrite or uh, rephrase some of your uh, paragraphs in the introduction. Right? Okay. I think I, I don't know, I lost, the, lost track of the number. <laughs> okay. Right. What is it expected of? Uh, this is the sum and substance of what I wanted to say. I divide the presentation into three parts, report writing. First one I call it as preliminaries. Right? It, you will not find it in the books, but I call it as preliminaries. Why preliminaries? Because it is a title page. It speaks about the table of contents. It uh, contains acknowledgement. If it is law, list of statutes, list of cases, list of abbreviations, list of tables and diagrams, etc. 
right? These are all preliminaries. We receive some uh, thesis for evaluation. All the preliminaries are there except the table of contents. Table of contents comes later. And then they refer to all these things and give the page number before. You have to go backwards to see. So I hope you understand what I am saying. Preliminary, there is an order. There is a method in madness also. Right? That order we have to follow. Then the second part is the, the text. Which is very simple. Which will have two important parts. One is introduction, the other one is conclusion. Right? And in between, how many chapters you are going to add to your thesis? Right? Uh, many of them, in the law school, we have uh, created some sort of rules. If it is for a master's degree, LLM degree, the candidate has to write at least five chapters. Because if you have to focus on some research, present it in a much more meaningful manner, introduction and conclusion is common to everyone. But at least you arrange your thoughts in three different chapters. And if it is for PhD, a minimum of seven chapters must be there. But uh, to my surprise, I saw many of the theses coming for evaluation containing only four chapters or five chapters for PhD. Is it good? Is it appropriate? Then they immediately take an example. Sir, in mathematics, one uh, candidate has submitted only one sheet for his PhD. It was awarded. Right? Mathematics, it may be possible. Right? So therefore, you know, the arguments and counter-arguments can be given, but are you learning anything from this process? And that is the question. Degree is only secondary. Please keep this in mind. If you think degree is primary, then you are lost. Degree is only secondary. How much knowledge you have added to yourself is what you should think in terms of writing a thesis. So therefore, the middle part, the main body of the report, organized in chapters, is the second uh, substantial portion of that. And the last one is the reference materials, in which uh, how to write a footnote. Right? All the Scopus indexed journals today, if you see, they start with a beautiful name. International Journal on Law and Politics, Law and Administration, Law and Medicine, everything. But they don't have a footnote. Right? I really do not know whether they really go through the literature. Because when they come for interview, we also go through some of these uh, papers. Even the sentences are not complete. Right? So, footnote plays a major, major role. And we also add some conclusion to that. I'll come to that a little later after one of the slides. Right? So, bibliography. And uh, very interestingly, you know, in bibliography, there is an order. You have to bring the books first, the article second, and other literature later. So, we inform the students uh, to follow the alphabetical order while writing the books or articles. He was not listening to us properly, he went back and put everything in alphabetical order. Articles first, <laughs> books second. <laughs> right? Then you have to tell him this is not alphabetical order we are talking about, it is something else. So, you know, the bibliography, writing a bibliography itself is an art. Itself is an art. Right? And why it is being done, I will let you know. The appendices, you know, where you have to add some literature, you have given a questionnaire, right? You have conducted some interviews. You have uh, met three or four different categories of people, government officials, private agency, NGOs, students, or teachers, whosoever it is. The questionnaire will be entirely different. You want to add all of them as part and parcel of the thesis, they can come as appendix number one, two, three, and four, and so on and so forth. This is the crux of the final uh, outcome of report writing. This is only foundation. How it should look like, right? I have given the cover page, I think I will not, uh, you will not be in a position to see this, right? I have given the logo of NLU Bhopal, that is the last institution I served. So I will skip this and then come to this is very important. Now, in many cases that I receive, whether it is uh, LLM or PhD, I see the content page running through 15, 16 pages, right? Chapter 1, subdivision within that. Chapter 2, series of subdivisions within that. Right? Is it all right? Is it good? I will not find fault with that. But to keep some amount of vagueness and bring everything under one page 
if you can write the content page in one single sheet, I would consider that as the best one. Whatever you want to say that you are going to explain, describe in the chapters, right? Don't write 15, 16 pages of contents, right? And that is little uh, demoralizing for the teacher or for the evaluator himself or herself. Now here also, if you see the structure, now you'll see three columns, right? One, two, and three. And all something you see three, that's why I highlighted in red, black, and blue. It has a meaning. When you see the structure, it is symmetrical. And if you read the content, for example, contents, certificate, and somebody writes table of contents. Right? I don't know if the supervisor says that, please do. By writing table of contents in the heaven is not going to fall. <laughs> certificate, the number that we give, the number we assign, is entirely different. It is Roman letter, Roman numeral, lower case. Right? Roman uh, numeral, <coughs> lower case. Right? Acknowledgement, number two. Table of statutes, three, I just put that uh, sequence as it is. Up to list of tables, that is one part of it. But they are all aligned to this particular phase where the topics commence. That is how it is aligned. Right? Now when you do this, what is the benefit you get? The examiner who sees, let me tell you, instead of turning 16 pages or 17 pages to see the content page first, I'm, I'll be, I can give it in writing, any examiner, when he looks at one page content, he or she will be much more pleased. Because this is the arrangement in which you are going to submit your research report. That's all, nothing else. Nothing else. And then, when you look at the chapter, we are assigning Roman numeral uppercase. Right? We are assigning Roman numeral uppercase. But nowadays they don't follow this, they simply write 1, 2, 3, they are regular, regular numeral, they just use it. But there is this, you know, this is the method in which we are all taught. And therefore, upper uh, case Roman numeral, <coughs> chapter wise, and then you introduce the topic, and then the page number commences one from the introduction. And you see in the many of the theses, 1 to 38. Introduction 1 to 38. Right? The moment I put the second chapter starts at 39, any idiot will understand that it goes up to 38. There is no point in simply adding one more numeral there. Right? The chapter on which page it begins alone is mandatory. Right? So you organize all these themes in a particular manner after completion. Now some of them, some of the pieces I have received, I see the Roman, the Roman numeral lowercase is not all there. There also it starts with page number one, right? And then contents, they also give page number for the contents. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not able to accept this at all. Content page should not have any page number. Even if it is running to 20 pages, it's all right. You cannot page them. You cannot number them, right? So therefore, when you look at this, up to it is uh, one sequence, lowercase numeral for the preliminaries. Second substantive portion, you start with uh, you know, numeral number one, it continues for each and every chapter, the page on which it begins alone is given, nothing more than that. And then bibliography is a continuous number thereafter. Though the color is different, it is a continuous process. Annexure one and two, I have already mentioned. If this you are able to present, in a nutshell, you are revealing your intention, your uh, research design, how you have written the report, by looking at one single page, right? It is an art by itself. I can reduce or I can improve this to 15 pages or 20 pages, right? Easiest thing is if I give a double line space, it will go to two pages, right? If I add somewhere, you know, introduction, uh, there I say introduction, introduction again, right? Then hypothesis, uh, this, that, everything. You know, it, you can keep on adding everything and give two line space, it will go to 20 pages. That's not what is intended. How you are able to make the examiner or anyone, any reader, 
as to how you have translated this into a beautiful design in one single page. I think that's more important, right? Footnote and the references. I think uh, this must have been discussed, so I will not uh, venture out to speak much about it. What is the purpose of uh, providing a footnote? We are taught in that manner. Not what type of footnote you should write. The purpose of writing a footnote is that when you cite a footnote or a reference, the examiner would like to verify whether the document exists at all or not. Whether you have really referred to the book at all or not. The examiner may be interested in going through because it's an interesting point. The examiner would like to refer the book to somebody else or he would like to read that. And then he logs in and sees that the book is non-existent. Right? There are some above amount of other, you know, aberrations will be there. For example, in those days when we wrote, the page numbers sometimes we forget. But finally, when you sit and complete the thesis, you will not go to the library to check the page number. So you just imagine something and uh, put page number 54. Right? That may be, you know, possible, but the examiner is very happy to see that uh, the full citation is given. What are the essentials of a footnote or a reference? Then what comes thereafter, I will try to explain Harvard or Blue Book, MLA style sheet, or scholar, all these things. I will take two minutes to explain those things. Now, what is important uh, in a footnote or a reference is the name of uh, the author or authors or editor or editors, right? If there are more than three editors, we only put the two names and use the term at all, right? You don't have to write all the four or five names, right? The title of the book, the publisher, place of publication, year of publication, the page or pages, books and articles accordingly, case reports and internet resources. In a way that uh, even in internet resources, there is a way of, uh, you know, putting it in your uh, footnote. I will come to that uh, as we proceed. Now, today, as chat GPT has given you so much of freedom, right? There are universities where they have withdrawn the PhD thesis, the doctorate given to some of the candidates based on the documentation. Today, all the universities are obliged or obligated to submit a soft copy to the centralized system called as Shodh Ganga, right? The Association of Indian Universities used to print, you know, in those days. Now, today, Shodh Ganga, you are supposed to upload it. And by any chance, they come across, right? <coughs> Plagiarism is one nuisance. And unlike the Westerners, we are very, very conservative. During the COVID period, when a survey was conducted in Western countries, both the teachers and taught, almost 49% of them have admitted having cheated either the teacher or the teacher cheating the students in the evaluation or whatever it is, right? And therefore, the moment chat GPT came, the first country to say that we will not rely upon, we will ban chat GPT was Australia, followed by Italy, right? So things will go, but if you think that you have cheated, you got chat GPT, and then finally there was uh, some joke going around, Somebody wrote a thesis and uh, it was purely based on ChatGPT. At the fag end, generated by ChatGPT, that he failed to remove it. Right? If the examiner is uh, sharp enough, he or she can easily identify. Footnote. Footnote number 34, 35, all of a sudden it goes to 200. Right? So these are all indications, the footprints that you leave in your thesis when you try to copy, when you try to cheat something, right? So therefore, the publication, when it goes to Shodh Ganga, it is stored there during your lifetime and beyond. And therefore, uh, I'll just give you two uh, issues. The Delhi High Court, uh, a full bench of the Delhi High Court, in a decision, which they signed, all the three of them signed, and announced. Third day, there was a report in the newspaper that this judgment has taken more than 58 paragraphs from a book 
which they have not acknowledged. It is on IPR law. On IPR law, the judges have borrowed 58 paragraphs from a book without acknowledging that particular source. The moment it was published in the newspaper, next day the, the three judges once again convened themselves into a bench. I don't know whether it is possible at all or not. And then removed those 58 pages and added a footnote. It is a mistake committed by the researchers. <laughs> very easy to shift the blame. That is what I am saying. It is very easy to shift the blame. But who has signed? The researcher has not signed. It is those three judges who have signed it. I hope you understand what I am trying to tell you. Somewhere uh, in criminal uh, law, I am also a student of criminal law, every criminal leaves some evidence or the other. I am not calling researchers as criminals. <laughs> but they also do something called as cheating, which is a criminal offence. Right? They leave behind some evidence and be careful and don't do that. Today as chat GPT, uh, when I was the Vice Chancellor at Ambedkar Law University, uh, very interesting, I want, uh, can you hear me in the last row? So I should not miss this example. Uh, it was uh, a national conference, three day conference on uh, uh, bonded labour. So we asked the researchers to submit the papers and I was reviewing one paper, all the papers, one paper was brilliant, brilliant to the core. So I was just going through all the pages, uh, very briefly of course I was not uh, reading. And when I came to the last page, I called the student, right, uh, the, the, who has become a teacher, I called the teacher. Uh, I said, uh, where did you copy this one from? Said, no sir, it's my writing. I know his language, his capacity to speak four sentences in English. Right? I have done it. And before calling him, I did a little bit of mischief. I also went to Google, keyed in the title. Along with the title came some foreign authors. Right? And I caught him, not because of anything else. The foreign authors also say, I would like to thank, you know, finally they thank. And uh, I thank my wife, Betty. <laughs> <laughs> and the two children. <laughs> no, it does not require any seventh sense or anything. <laughs> when you read it, then I told him, when are you married? No, sir, I am not married. Then who is Betty? <laughs> and who are these two children? No, sir, I don't have any. Then this is your paper. When I showed it, it was just flat. <laughs> so, you know, if you think that you are smart enough, there are smarter people, and the same chat GPT will catch you and tell you that this is the place where you have looked at the information from. Right? Uh, there are other issues which I will not get into the details. I think I have to go through another file, right? Um, right. The language correction I already mentioned to you. It's much more easier for you. I will not get into it. Uh, today, the last two slides. Uh, if you go through any of the cases submitted after 2010, the proportion of internet sources being given as a source is increasing year after year or month after month, right? There used to be physically read books and articles, journals. Today everything is available in the digital form and they can also refer to it which means they have not gone to the library. They have not seen the physical book, right? So therefore, is it wrong? It is not wrong. All these uh, resources have some URLs, right? What is URL? Very good. So you have to follow that. And then uh, you have uh, available at. There is no need to mention available at. You say that this is the title of the book, or the title of the article, the author's title, and give the URL. That's more than sufficient, right? But you are supposed to give one important uh, data when you have accessed it, right? When you are referred and when you got this, because 
that information would have been moved from that website. You got the point. And therefore, it is very relevant, very material for you to come to the conclusion that when you accessed it, it was there. When you accessed that information, it was there in that website. Uh, this I have said. Uh, right. I think all of you have must be happy. <laughs> I think uh, when they go out, uh, Dr. Subramanya will ask, what did you say, what did you speak about uh, report writing? I didn't hear anything. <laughs> right? But uh, you know how you should not get into some problems. And that is the best way of teaching how to write uh, the right way of uh, report writing. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer. Thank you very much for your patience. Uh,